You're welcome back. The Federal Inland Revenue Service is asking taxpayers in the country to continue to pay their value-added tax to the FIRS in order to avoid facing penalties or failing to do so. The FIRS issued the directive following numerous inquiries to the service in view of a recent judgment obtained by the River State Government at the Federal High Court Port Harcourt in River State, which ruled that states and not the federal government are constitutionally empowered to collect VAT. However, the governor of River State, Yesonwike, has signed into law a bill which authorizes the River State government to henceforth collect value-added tax in the state. Now, what does this mean? What reaction can we expect from other states? We have partner, Africa tax leader at PwC, Mr. Taiwo Yudili, to talk to us about this. Good to have you, Mr. Yudili. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So first of all, we need to clarify. At this stage, because of the appeal from the FIRS, one of the conditions that they asked for was status quo remains. That means Nigerians are supposed to pay to the Federal Inland government. Revenue mm -hmm. Service as at now. Right. Yeah, I will say that it's not a straightforward um, question to, to address. Okay. Uh, because lawyers would also tell you the fact that you file for a stay of execution in itself does not mean that you should stop the judgment from being enforced. Uh, so the good news, though, is that based on the VAT law, both the national, I'll call it national VAT law now, mm -hmm. and the river state VAT law, require that you only file and pay, um, file your returns and pay your VAT on the 21st day of the succeeding month. In other words, this law that was signed into law on the 19th of August in River State, assuming it came into effect immediately, taxpayers and businesses would only have to pay the VAT by 21st of September. So that gives us, even from today, almost 30 days. That's, it. That's enough time, in my view, for the taxpayers and businesses in River State, using whatever platforms they have in terms of association, organized private sector groups, to go to court and ask the courts. I think the most competent authority to ask is the courts. Ask the courts, who should I pay to? Because if you go to FRS, from FRS, what do you think I'll tell you? Okay, say, me. Because the FRS <laughs> just released this this morning or last night yes. to say that Nigerians should pay that to them. Yeah. 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 So And it doesn't mean that they're wrong. But if you go to River State, they'll say, pay to me. For the people on the ground there, the reality may be very different for them. So my, I'll, I'll advise that they ask the court to tell them what to do. So legally, we don't know. We don't know. Now. We don't know. Um, but we don't know only when it comes to River State. Yes. Nationally, we're still where we were, which is VAT is to FRS. And that is correct, 100%. In fact, this judgment is not the only one. We had... We've seen a number of judgments uh, at different points, even all the way to the Supreme Court. We've seen the ones that validated VAT and said you couldn't do consumption tax at the same time because VAT had covered the field of consumption tax, even Supreme Court. So it's not like this uh, judgment is novel and is the first one. Mm -hmm. uh, but nobody had taken the same effort and speed to try and implement as River State. As River State. Right. Uh, the judgment was given on the 9th. By 19th, they had a law, 10 days. Wow. You know, that's a record. I'm that's sure fast. it's a record in Nigeria. <laughs> you know, so the question is, could we have done it differently? And my answer is yes. Mm. You know, you, you don't want to win a war and lose the battle. Right. Even if you're legally right, what does it mean for businesses? That if I'm looking for where to put my business in Nigeria now, I'll certainly not go to River State because, of the because it creates there. the uncertainty for right. me. Do you need to engage more? Engage with even the other governors, your fellow uh, governors. Engage with NEC, with FRS, even with taxpayers and practitioners. Mm -hmm. Your tax authority, do you have a unit? Have you trained them? We've seen one of my clients uh, got a demand notice from... River State for VAT, and I was laughing. You're not supposed to issue, there's no provision in that law that says you give a demand notice. Mm. The law says you do your own VAT, calculate output, input, and remit to the authority 21 of the following month. They're sending, but they sent it, I think they had prepared it before. They just wow. sent the same day. But how does that teething? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> teething stages. But, but looking yes. at, uh, you know, collection, this is, more responsibility for river states. How, how do you, can they do? They have the capacity for this. Yeah. So I like that question actually. So I think we need to break it down a little bit. Historically, um, VAT is one of the newest taxes in the world. 
So it only came into the scene around the 50s and 60s. First country to implement it is France. So in Nigeria, uh, as of 1963, when we decided we'll be a federation, and I still read that constitution this morning, I wanted to see what was it that we thought about at the time. There was no VAT, there was no consumption tax, but there was trade taxes. Trade. Trade taxes, okay. particularly focusing on taxes on commodities. And it was on the exclusive legislative list, which means only the federal government can legislate it. If you then fast forward, you get to 1993. Before then, in 1986, the military issued an order or a decree of six stars. Six stars was being uh, implemented by a few states. In 1993, Nigeria decided we needed a VAT law. And the VAT law was meant to replace the sales tax. And that's exactly what we did. You would, you would know that the VAT law in Nigeria predates the 1999 constitution, which means we're already collecting VAT when we wrote the 1999 constitution. constitution. But the problem with the 1999 constitution is it gave you the exclusive legislative list, says this is only for the federal government. It gave you the concurrent. It says both of you can legislate on it. Both lists are silent about VAT. But the way the lawyers have interpreted it is if something is not in the exclusive and it's not in the concurrent, it is in an invisible list called residual list. And that residual list is therefore the exclusive remit of the state. That's where we are where we are now. Of the state. Of the state. Okay. But this is what it means in practical terms. As of last year, the FRS collected 1.53 trillion from VAT. About 51% of that amount, more than half, came from VAT on imports and VAT on non-import foreign services. In other words, even if you change the law today to say every state should start collecting their VAT, more than half of VAT will still be collected by the federal, the federal government, government because states won't go to the border, mm. right? So this federal government is only sharing 15%, right? FCT alone last year collected 202 billion naira, and FCT and the local government only shared 35 billion. So even FCT yeah, donated more than 160 billion. billion to the port. So it's not a conversation between states and federal. State and local government are sharing 85%. The conversation we should be having, and maybe to your question about do they have the capacity, I don't think so. And I say that based on my experience and what I've seen in the past 20 years or more. All over the world, the highest revenue yielding tax is personal income tax all over the world. South Africa uh, in 2019 collected about 12 trillion naira from personal income tax alone. South Africa, less than one third of our population. How much did we collect in Nigeria? 844 billion, not even one trillion. This is a tax that states have been collecting for before I started secondary school. <laughs> <laughs> the same states are empowered to implement stamp duties until FRS picked it up about three years ago, not even one billion, all of them combined. They were, collecting for, they were not collecting it at all. Property taxes. So we have enough evidence to come to a conclusion that what is good for Nigeria today is to find a format of VAT that satisfies the, the concern of some of the states, like River State, which is valid, which is that I'm generating more than the other person I know. Right. And this other person I know, including those who say Saturday night time should not be sold in their territories. And yes. And they are sharing the VAT. Mm -hmm. So those concerns are valid. We can address those concerns within a framework that work for us as a country in the interest of everyone. But there's also the concern from uh, some of the examples you've noted, uh, the, some of the taxes that states are even supposed to be collecting and they're not even doing well. Shouldn't the state focus on that and look for ways of efficiently collecting those taxes and perhaps they would not even, you know, be so... That one. So, That's exactly the point. So the issue is if you focus on effectiveness, and efficiency of collection, we should not be talking about this at all. The only conversation we should be having now is, that percentage you're giving me, is it the right percentage? Not that you want to start collecting it. If you think about what it means for businesses, I buy something in Kano, and I'm selling it in Lagos or in Port Harcourt. 
under a VAT system, you pay input VAT. I paid my input VAT in Kano. When I get to Port Harcourt and I'm selling there and have output VAT, how do I offset? If I sell at a lower amount than I bought it, for VAT, you have a refund. Would River State give me a refund of what I paid to Kano State? What if I'm producing those goods for exports? After exporting it, I'm supposed to get a refund because we zero rate it in Nigeria. Who will give me that, that refund? <laughs> Many countries where they have fiscal federalism like us, Canada, US, Australia, India, everybody has developed their own formats of what is good for them. In Canada, for example, you have the GST, Good and Services Tax, as a federal level. Mm -hmm. And every province uh, is able to add their own to it. And they call it provincial sales tax. Uh, you know, a province like uh, Alberta decided that they don't want it. So it's zero for them. They only collect the federal one. Uh, Ontario decided they need an additional 8%. The U.S. is not a good example, though. They do sales tax in all the states. And in fact, one of the biggest conversations in the U.S. is that that sales tax is no longer fit for purpose because it hasn't considered the digital economy. So you're in California, but your other goods from New York. So the way the, the sales tax was designed in, in the U.S. is where you are selling it, you yeah, charge the tax. Yes. But you're sending it to California, where I will use it. <laughs> they are struggling with it, so we shouldn't copy from them. Okay. Yeah, but we must find a model that works for us So as it's a still a lot of work to be to done, done. Yes. even in River State or in other states. And, states. And, <laughs> and the constitutional review amendment that we are going through now is a fantastic opportunity to address this issue. To address issues. that. And we do hope uh, that uh, the judiciary... I mean, uh, the legislators will take this into consideration and then we'll be able to satisfy all of that. Well, we need to thank you so much, Mr. Taiwo Yudili, for thank spending you. this time with us and uh, exposing to us that we still have a lot of conversations to hold yes. to yep. satisfy this issue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just thank, thank you for having us. And we me. hope thank that you. this time yes. around we'll be able to get to a conclusion yeah. because, mm -hmm. like, you know, that there have been other cases even before mm -hmm. now, talking about tax and even other countries. Yeah. I think one of the conversations should also be like, uh, things are changing, like the digital issue you brought up now. Things are changing. We need to change with times. And, 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 and some people change. are actually excited about this, saying this is true federalism. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> yeah, some people yes, say that. And yes. that it will also challenge states, states yes. to produce to more looking inward, and, inward because they know yes. they will get more. Yes, yeah. yeah, those are all valid. It's just a question of let's balance it mm -hmm. so that you're not gaining one and losing two. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Taiwo Yudili, Africa Tax Leader at PwC. Thank I enjoyed you very the rest much of for your day. Thank you.